Okay, so we'll do just general summary of stuff. When to use what kind of formula. Okay, so one category is the combined uh, gas law. And that's the P1V1 over N1T1. And this goes for Charles' law, Avogadro's law, etc. This is when you have one particular gas changing states. The volume changes, volume pressure, moles, or temperature, or a combination of all four change. One of them you're asked about, but the rest they give you numerical changes. Okay, so this has to do with change. The ideal gas law. This one uh, you use whenever you have, again, one gas. Uh, you can use it in two different cases. The easier type is when you have one particular gas. Uh, there could be variations on it with the, with the density or the molar mass being involved in the problem. And the density and molar mass are hidden inside uh, moles usually. Uh, but otherwise that's straightforward, but this can often, all, I wouldn't say always, but often appears in Dalt's Law kind of questions. Okay, a variation on this, the real gas. Uh, we're really not going to do calculations with the real gas. Uh, this is more conceptual. So know the difference between a real gas and an ideal gas. The most common, though you could have a calculation, you see seen or on a previous test they had a calculation like this with the compressibility factor for ideal gas is 1 or close to 1 I had, I gave everybody P, V, N, and T and had them calculate and ask, I asked them if it was a real gas or not and so they had to calculate in compressibility factor and if they didn't get 1 it was a real gas so that's really the only calculation. Otherwise, it happens at uh, high pressure or very low temperatures. Or both. Wait, so if it's not one, then it is a real gas or it isn't? That's r uh, if it's one means ideal. Okay. Not one means real or non ideal. Okay? Okay, the other whole stuff is Dalton. So this is mixtures of gases. It's usually pretty obvious because there's more than one gas. But these are tough because we don't, in this chapter, we rarely say what type of, but we don't say the word like titration, you know it's a titration problem. So none of the problems are labeled as this is the type, so you have to figure that out. So here we're giving more than one gas. So uh, here you're going to use, like for example, the total pressure is the sum of the partial pressures, or the total moles is the sum of all the moles. Or occasionally, but I'd say rarely, you're going to use the, the total volume is the sum of the volumes. And then uh, after that, you know that the mole fraction is the partial pressure of one, the one particular gas of the total, or the moles of the total moles, or the volume over the total volume. So some combination of that, usually this part is the most common for you all that you would use. And then this also, the ideal gas for good measure is thrown into a lot of these kinds of questions. Because sometimes you have, like we did on a previous problem, N, R, and T, but we didn't have V, for example. Okay, so that's another type. What is the X one stand for? Which part? This X? X? Mm -hmm. X means mole fraction. And literally it goes with this part of it. The moles of whatever it is divided by the total moles. But all those are equal to the mole fraction. Okay, some other things you need to know. Graham's Law.
Graham's law, kind of like Dalton's law, involves not one gas, but in this case two. Not more than two, only two for Graham's law. Okay? Graham's law has property of, say, gas A divided by property of gas B equals the inverse of the molar masses. Uh, so that could be like distance traveled, uh, rate, it could be an amount, like a mass or, or a mole, that kind of amount, that, that would work too. Uh, and it can be time, but time's the one of the four properties here that does not invert the molar masses. So that's, you'll need to remember that yourself. So, distinguish between these two, this will have... It, it'll usually like give you both molecules and then give you one of the properties. Where Dalton's law will be more like, it'll give you like a, a smattering of random stuff that you have to mess with. Okay, so that's that one. We've also got the root mean square velocity. Three RT over M. The key for this one I mean, if you see velocity, there's very few equations in this chapter that you can use, and this is one of them. And the key, you need to get the correct units. So M needs to be kilograms per mole, and T uh, needs to be Kelvin. Everywhere here, T needs to be Kelvin. Uh, and most of Chem 2, your T needs to be in Kelvin. Okay, so that one, if you see root mean square velocity, that's all you got. And then the last, kinetic energy, or maybe there might be more, but right now, kinetic energy. So E sub K is one half MU squared, or three halves RT. So there's two equations for the kinetic energy, just depending on what you're given. And really, if you put these two equations together and solve for U, that's where this one comes from. So, uh, here again you need to use for m kilograms per mole. So, I think m is really, is, we label it mass here, but really it's a molar mass. All the, these r's here are 8.3145, the joules per mole Kelvin. Only this r in the ideal gas is the other. 0.08206. Okay, let's see if there's anything else that kind of sticks out. Otherwise, I'd say most of the other equations are conceptual in this chapter. Is that okay? Is that the summary you're looking for? Okay.